If you journey deep into the jungles of Borneo, it's still possible to capture a glimpse of the primeval. It's a world of rare and wonderful creatures. The island is home to the largest tree dweller in the world, the Orang Utan. They are the only great ape of Asia. Sadly, we are losing them, one by one, and at a terrible pace. I'm Michelle Yeo, and I've come home to Malaysia for the adventure of a lifetime. Okay, Marie, jalan. In the animal's eyes, I see a thoughtful and intelligent being. Good, you see, he is really ready to go. I'm here to find out what's being done to protect this remarkable creature, to meet the people fighting to save them. Join me deep in the jungles of Sabah, Malaysia, among the great apes. Come, come. Hey, look what I have. Sen, 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 hey. You gonna come, yes? Are you going to come? Look what I have. Look what I have. Hey. Good morning, Sen. How are you doing? Yeah. Hello. I'm at the Sapilok Rehabilitation Center. That was Sen. He's my adopted baby orang utan. Look at him. When he was rescued, he was malnourished. He was about two kilograms and could fit in the palm of your hand. Four months old. Now he's a healthy, robust, precocious little three-year-old. Okay, there's your pen. All right, ready, boys? Sen is one of 53 orphaned orangutans. Most of them were found alone in plantations after their forest homes were destroyed. Sapilok provides a home and safe haven with the intention of returning them first to full health and then back to the wild. Yeah, both of them are in there. You want to go play with them? Look at them. I'm volunteering here to see for myself what it takes to return them home. This is the first successful orangutan rehabilitation center in the world. It's located in the state of Sabah, Malaysia, in the Kabili Sapiluk Forest Reserve. They're actually very gentle. When rescued orangutans arrive, we take on the role of mothers. Okay, okay, all right, I'm not going. I'm starting to feel a real bond with these babies. Oh, come on, baby. <laughs> no, no, your bottle is over there. Come on, hold on. In the wild, an infant orangutan depends on his mother longer than any other animal in the world. The bond between mother and young lasts about seven years. She will teach him all he needs to know to survive in the rainforest. Hi, Dr. Hi. Cecilia. Michelle. Good morning. Good morning. They're enjoying the electrolytes. Yes, yes. That? Okay. At the center, Dr. Cecilia is the resident vet. Well, we normally feed them with milk. But um, today they are having a bit of diarrhea, as yeah. you can see here. Mm -hmm. yeah, so that's why we give them rehydration fluid, the oral electrolytes. Yeah. The rest of the youngsters are getting restless and demanding their morning meal. It's not easy to keep up with so many hungry mouths. Then with the older ones, oh my goodness. They were hungry, crying desperately, screaming away, throwing little hissy fits. One at a time, okay? Send first. 
Stand first. We we're coming to you, Isong. Don't worry. Here we go, baby. Hey, come here. Okay. Are you got it? Are you good? Yeah. Cheerio. Okay, darling. Woo! So everybody is very excited to get their milk. And when they finish theirs, they're eager to get next door's milk as well. Come on, Candy. After Candy. breakfast, okay. we move the orang utans to their play cages for exercise. All right. Yeah? Okay. Let's go. All right. You feeling good this morning? Yeah. Whee! <laughs> good. Come on. Hey, you're behaving well this morning. Yes, you'll get your play when you get into your pen. Go, one at a time. All right. Up. The play cages allow them to develop their social skills. There we are. Yeah. Play nice. But this little okay. one has something Go sneaky find. in mind. I mean, they're actually very good at opening the locks. They can reach their hand out and, you know, jiggle this. I know you know how to do it. I've seen you do it before. Don't try to look innocent. So this is my sen. Your sen. <laughs> yeah. Your sen. Okay. okay, up we go, sen. Yeah, Caged orangutans need a bath every day. Yeah. Give that to me. No. It's good I'm for you to bath. Ah. Yes, I know you get like that. Whoa. That's great. There we go. He's got a mind of his own. Yeah. Shampoo time, baby. Sen, his nickname is the gangster because he's the one that's, you know, more feisty. He has his own mind. He decides what he wants to do. You like to stand up there. No, you're not supposed to drink it. I'm going to give you that. Yeah. All right, watch your eyes. Good boy. Look up. Woo! Oh, he's all, I think he's spicy. Yeah. Okay. All right. Time. There we go. Okay. So we can actually take this opportunity to check for wounds if there's any. Yeah. So no wounds yet? No. Yeah, let's just check a little bit. Nice little rub down. Like a little massage for you. <laughs> Whoa, he's like in a spa now. Clean your hands. You see your hands? Whoa. Hey, see that's what he loves to do. This is my little sen. He's got character. Okay. Let's, go. Okay. let's go, let's go. Okay. okay. Nice and clean now. Very nice and clean. Okay. Good boy. If Sen were wild, he'd never need a bath. Orang utans rarely climb down from their trees. He would learn all his climbing skills from his mother. By three, he would be able to venture out on his own but usually stay within her watchful eye. Let's go again. Let's but at the centre, it is critical Ooh, orphans learn yeah. from their human caregivers okay. and from each other. Come on. Yeah. Yes! Well done! To do this? Sen is perfecting his climbing skills. Clever. It's a slow process, and he needs lots yeah. of encouragement. Whoa. Yay! He's going for it. Good boy. That's right. Good boy. Well done. Well oh, done. Oh. Oh, so this time the fall was up. minor, but a fall in the wild could be catastrophic. So it's important Sen has lots of time to practice. Hi, Sen. Hi, Sen. Hi, Sen. I think doing something like this is very gratifying. I am learning so much. The real life experience really enriches you as a person. Hello, sweetie. Well done. Places like Sapilok do amazing work. But we must stop the flow of orphans and keep orangutans where they belong. I'm hoping to see my first great ape in the wild.
A warrior in the battle to save orangutans is Mark Ancrenas. All right, this is the way. Here we are. It's so beautiful. It is beautiful. We're flying over one of the most spectacular wildlife habitats in Southeast Asia, the Kinabatangan floodplain in the state of Sabah. So we are now in Kinabatangan. Yeah, it's the longest river in Sabah. Mark has been working in Sabah for about 15 years. When he began, there was little information on how many and where orangutans lived so it was critical to count them. It's very difficult to spot the orangutan. So actually what we do is not to look for the animals, but we look for their nest. Orangutans are building nests every day. So the nest, of course, they don't move in the forest, unlike orangutans. So it's easier for us to find the nest. So what we do now is to try spotting orangutan nests. Is that one there? Uh, yeah. yeah, here you have one nest. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> Using helicopter and ground surveys, not only did he learn there were over a thousand orangutans living within the Kinabatangan floodplain, but 11,000 in Sabah. Oh, wow. Big one here. You see? Wow, yeah. Finding 1,000 orangutans is good news. Over the last century, the orangutan population here has decreased by 95%. It is also estimated that more than three quarters of Sabah's virgin forests have been logged. For years, scientists thought orangutans needed virgin forest to survive. This area yeah. has been, it's not virgin forest. No, it's not. These forests have been exploited and what we started to do 15 years ago was to study whether orangutan could survive or not in this kind of habitat. And what we find out is that they are mostly eating fruits, but when there is no fruits available, like in this kind of forest, they will go for leaves or for bark. We still have a lot of different trees, as you can see, which means that there is enough food available for the animals. Knowing this, conservation plans can be made where even degraded forests play a role in orangutan survival. From the skies, we take to the river. These floodplains along the Kinabatangan River are so precious that a 26,000 hectare area was made a safe haven for wildlife. Found only in Borneo, proboscis monkeys are one of 10 primates that live here. Only the males have a pendulous nose and an outrageous pot belly. These curious monkeys have multi-chambered stomachs that allow them to feed primarily on leaves. They rarely stray more than 600 meters from the shore, so their survival depends on this swath of forest along the river. To protect its rare biodiversity, Mark and the Sabah Wildlife Department established the Kinabatangan Orangutan Conservation Project. Thank you. Now the project has 40 local research assistants. Its permanent study site is where most of the detailed orangutan research is done. Mincho has been training under Mark for the last six years. He knows the forest so well that we quickly find what we are looking for. A wild orangutan, a three-year-old and his mother. She knows where the best fruit trees are and will return to them throughout her life. are not the only ones in the tree. Yeah, two babies. 
Two baby. Two small ones. Two small ones. Orangutans are usually solitary, but a fruiting tree can attract several animals. Nearly all adult females in the Kinabatangan area have babies, but researchers rarely see them interact like this. But do babies always play together? Yeah, it's very rare actually, because usually the baby are staying with the mother, and they are solitary. Yeah. Yeah. Orangutans still impress even experienced scientists like Mark. Wow, very yeah, cool. Very lucky for me. Mark's work is inspiring. Seeing my first wild orangutan has truly been incredible. Take care, eh? Yeah. Hey guys, see you soon. <laughs> so we're gonna go up and down the Sungai Kinabatan now? Mincho tells me that in the last 10 years, there has been a gradual decline in poaching and illegal logging. The community now realizes the importance of preserving the forest for their well-being and for wildlife. But all is not well in paradise. Habitat loss is the most critical threat to the survival of the orangutans here. Oil palm plantations and cleared areas due to logging have forced orangutans into smaller and smaller areas. Kinabatangan Wildlife Sanctuary is made up of pockets of protected habitat. Some of these areas are too small to sustain a viable long-term population. The areas in between can severely hinder the movement of orangutans. So efforts are being made to create forest corridors. The animals could be extinct in less than 50 years if nothing is done to reconnect them. The government, NGOs and plantations are working together to create solutions. Kopal Mascot, a community-based organization, runs a forest habitat restoration project. The process begins high in the canopy. Seeds have to be collected so that they have trees to plant. Oh, okay, Michelle, are you happy to put this on? Okay. So you just put your leg in there. Martin Vogel, a project advisor, gets me ready to climb. Just until you get the waist bit on. Let's go. For my films like Crouching Tiger, I've had to do a lot of martial arts training, so I stay fit. And it sure helps at times like this. Yeah, now you got it. I've actually done a lot of climbing too, but I think they're not sure I can make it. Almost there. It's well done. All right. Push How picker. high up are we now? How high are we up? So we're about uh, 20 or 25 meters from it. We can't just buy rainforest seeds in a gardening store. This tree has nice, healthy fruit. We should be able to get good seeds that will germinate and survive. Okay. And we're cutting fruit that orangutans love. So we've got to get to it before they do. I got it. <laughs> it's time to take a break, orangutan style. Mm. I need to 
Rosli Jukrana oversees the forest restoration project. They've raised saplings from recently harvested seeds. And now it's time to plant them. Ah, great, thank you. All right, I'm excited. Okay. Armed with this basket of saplings, I'm nice headed way. out to create a forest corridor. Okay, Marie. Jalan. It feels like a lofty goal to try to plant a rainforest. But these folks are doing it, step by step, tree by tree. Can you imagine tracking through this every day, huh? First thing in the morning, because they have to plant the trees quite far in. Jaga, jaga di sana. Kalau jatuh, jatuh pergi air. Jangan lupa saya. You see? Wah! Kasih tangan. Nenek kasih tangan. Woo! All right. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Yeah. Come on. Cepat, cepat. Cepat, cepat. Yeah. Woo! Wow. wow. Oh. Lepas itu buat apa? These ladies are so kind and generous to me. Wah, ini saya kawan baru. Terima kasih. Satu lah. You satu, saya satu. Macam keluarga sudah. They all take great pride in the work they do here. Their children and grandchildren will depend on these forests just as their ancestors did. You worked in timber? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Rosley is an example of how the community is changing. He once worked as an illegal logger. Now, like many others, he's proud to earn his living replanting the forest. In time, these tiny saplings will ensure the survival of the orang-utan and many other species. After a sapling takes root, they need to nurture and protect it for three years. A lot of effort, and they are making progress. They have planted over 110,000 trees. Rosley has been told that a herd of elephants is not too far away. From the river, we spot two adolescents. Rosley thinks there might be more. Slowly, they emerge from the dense jungle. It's amazing. We are so close to an entire herd of pygmy elephants, the smallest of the species. They are found only in Borneo. Elephants come down to the river to bathe and drink. There may be fewer than 1,500 of this rare elephant left in the wild. Like the orangutans, they will benefit significantly if the forest is reconnected. On certain stretches of the Kinabatangan, the forest is reduced to a narrow band, forcing the orangutans to the edge of the river. Rosley's trained eye spots something in the trees. I can hardly believe my good fortune. It looks like it might be a male. At up to 90 kilograms, the orang-utan is the largest tree-dwelling animal in the world. He 
bears the broad shoulders and wide cheeks that tell other males he's in charge in this patch of forest. There's a lot of fruits in that tree. A peaceful loner, he could live for 50 years and would sire many babies while in his prime. Ficus, or fig trees, are one of the species that sustain orangutans. They like fruits rich in carbohydrates and protein. But this gentleman is not interested in just any fig. He has patience to search for the ripest ones. He is so manlike. He's a beautiful, beautiful looking guy. Seeing this Lord of the Jungle is all inspiring. But not all orangutans will grow up like he has. We get word that Dr. Cecilia from the Sipilok Rehabilitation Center is going on a rescue mission. A local plantation has found a baby in need of help. My journey into the wilds of Kinabatangan ends too soon. Now, there's an orphaned baby we need to rescue. Dr. Cecilia and I just hope it's not too late to save this one. So what, what news do we have on this baby orangutan? Actually, the owner of the orchard who actually called us and informed us that they actually uh, managed to find a baby orangutan ah. in their place. And they actually couldn't find the mom. Oh, yeah. no. They could until now? No sign no, of no the mom? No sign, no sign. Oh, no. I hope the baby is in good condition. I hope so too, but we will have to see and we will have to check on that. The forest has been cleared for agriculture. When conflicts result, adult orangutans are killed. Orphaned babies are often found in poor health. Many suffer from stress, depression, and malnutrition. I can see a banana there, so I guess they've been giving him bananas. This one seems to just need his mom. Oh my goodness, he's calm, he's calm. Let's do a quick check. Let's yes. do a quick check. Is yeah, okay? just run here if he's okay. Oh. Oh, okay, let's see. Yeah. Just, just open okay. your mouth a little bit, baby. I know you're scared. You're not yes. healthy. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Now we'll rush okay. the baby back to Sapilo. Okay, Thank you. Okay. We will have to uh, check him straight away once we reach the clinic area. He might be starved for attention, but at least he'll eat. There are fewer orphans needing rescue every year. This may be a good sign that less land is being converted for agriculture. Hi. Hi, girls. We brought the baby back. Let's just uh, check the body weight. Come yeah. On. Back at the Sipilog Rehabilitation Center, Dr. Cecilia and her staff will do a thorough examination on the new orphan. Okay, still. Very good. Okay, up you go. Hi, baby. Here you go. Rescued animals can pass diseases such as tuberculosis and hepatitis onto the resident orangutans. Yeah, good baby. He's pink, nice all right. Tea. Yeah. So he's probably around uh, 
two to three years old, based on the dentition. Mm -hmm. yes. He'll have to endure at least three months of quarantine, but after that, he'll get five years of close attention and rehabilitation. A little bit muddy this morning. Yeah, it's been raining last night. And a good downpour. I'm anxious to see how the rehabilitation process ends. So Dr. Cecilia takes me to a feeding area in the adjacent forest. We're here. Older orangutans between the ages of four and six who have graduated from the nursery are released at feeding platforms. Initially, their diet is supplemented with milk, added minerals, vitamins and fruits. There we go. Okay. Okay, a little bit more. Whoopa! Well done. Later, they are slowly weaned off the food and encouraged to fend for themselves. What are you holding onto my leg for? The rehabilitation process is considered successful when an orangutan has totally adjusted to the forest and shows signs of independence. To graduate from the feeding platforms, apes must be expert climbers, know where to find their own food, and know how to build a nest for sleeping. But even with all the preparation possible, accidents can happen. This female fell from a tree and broke her leg. Dr. Cecilia operates, inserting a metal plate to reconnect and stabilize the broken femur. The surgery takes two hours, but the female eventually makes a full recovery. The ape was lucky she was found. Sapilok only monitors individuals at feeding platforms. But there is a new program that will monitor newly released animals from dawn till dusk. This is Unaru. This is Naru. Come on. All right. Naru is one of Sapilok's most recent graduates. Today, he's the first of two youngsters getting a pre-release exam. After six long years, he's ready again for the wild. Since Sapilok first opened, they've released more than 300 orangutans. Sapilok has reached its maximum carrying capacity. A bigger area has been identified in a sanctuary called Tabin. It's going to be a long ride, huh? The chief vet of the Sabah Wildlife Department, Dr. Sen Nathan, is here to head the translocation. Sapilok is uh, 40 square kilometers. Tabin is 1,200 square kilometers. Mm. So roughly, if you, if you, it's roughly twice the size of Singapore. Mm. It's a huge, it's a huge place. At Tabin, the animals will be monitored closely to get a clearer picture of how they adjust yeah. to the wild. Good, you see, right. he's really ready to go. Okay, and there he goes, look. Well done. Anakara is a six-year-old female who showed great independence. She's ready to go too. Before we leave, Dr. Cecilia will just prepare some electrolytes, some fluids for them, a little bit of food for the journey. So we're looking at maybe three to four vet checks along the way. We depart at dusk. It's cooler for the animals. Still, the journey won't be easy. Tabin is over 200 kilometers away on fairly rough roads. So it takes us a while to get there. We stop every 45 minutes to give them a break. Could you give them their drink? Oh, I think they're ready for some. Look at Naru. 
go. So how much does he get? How much does he want? No, no, the fluids contain electrolytes and will keep them hydrated. Okay, now thank you, now. Yes. Come on, man. Especially Anna here. Okay, a little bit more. There you go. Thank you. Finally, after some five hours, we reach Tarbin Reserve. The orangutans must be exhausted. We lead Nauru and Anakara to the temporary quarters for the night. They'll be prepped tomorrow for their release. We would like to get them settled soon. Orangutans are not accustomed to walking around at night. And something sinister is afoot. Oh my goodness. Fire ants swarm the cages and the surrounding ground. If they feel their nest is threatened, these tiny creatures will attack. They inject a nasty poison with their painful sting. Um, Can we bring the, the transport oh cages? Yeah. Bring, bring, carry the transport cages and bring it over here yeah. and put oh it in the living quarters. Yeah. We will relocate them to a ranger office for the night. Okay. Well, that was kind of an unexpected. Yeah, well, Michelle, these things happen in the forest, huh? Expect the unexpected. Mm -hmm. And um, it's lucky we, we spotted those fire ants because those could have caused a lot of injury to those orangs. It's been a very strange day for my traveling companions. A bedtime snack should help settle them down for the night. So we will be going to platform A first. Let's have a look and see if they're around. Um, and if they're not here, we'll get our research assistants to look for them. Just after dawn, Dr. Sen and the Tarbin Rangers take me out to meet some of the locals. Tarbin has a small population of orangutans for its size. It's ideal for translocated animals. In 2006, it became the world's first post-release monitoring center. If they don't come in a few seconds, then the research assistants can call them? Yeah, we will, we will get them, get the research assistant to give their normal orangutan call. There and is an orangutan call? Yeah, breakfast, breakfast is served. <laughs> come on, guys! at this first platform. So Dr. Sen must lead me deeper into the orang-utan's world. Can be quite slippery? Yep. Here, the canopy seems miles above my head. The virgin forest remains. This is the type of forest orang-utans love. Finally, we catch just a glimpse. When these ones were first released, 
They came back for food every day, and they were given a medical checkup once a month. Now, after six months, they are more self-sufficient, not so eager to see us. Post-release monitoring provides information on how successfully the orangutans are adapting, their health status, reproductive success, mortality, and their impact on fauna and flora are all observed. They have already found that rehabilitated orangutans tend to build their nests in far shorter trees than wild orangutans would choose. No one knows the long-term impact of that kind of behavioral change. To my eyes, they are far more wild than the ones still at Sapilo. This one might like to meet me, but the days of hugging and playing with these apes are over. It feels obvious that certain boundaries must be maintained. It is amazing to witness how far they have come. A stream in the jungle makes for food and water. I just hope that Nauru and Anakara manage to adapt as well as these two have. We will know soon enough. They are due for release tomorrow. Anakara and Naru are Sapiluk's latest graduates. They're ready for release at Tarbin Reserve. It's a special moment for Dr. Cecilia and me. She's excited. Uh oh, she's going in. She's hiding the plain peekaboo. Whoop! <laughs> but she's determined to get all of herself in that. Their release will help to contribute to its maintaining a large wild population with an enhanced genetic base. We are excited to see how they will react. are coming out now and so the two of them they will be assigned yes there will be two research assistants assigned to each of the orangutans and they will be monitoring them around the clock this is the moment that dr cecilia and her team work towards from rescuing baby orphans teaching them to cope in the wild and then setting them free it's like your mommy watching her babies. <laughs> Mixed feelings. This must be so gratifying. Yeah. You rehabilitate them for five years? Six years. Six years? Yeah. Bittersweet. 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 Anakara and Naru are the future of orangutan rehabilitation research. 
Their lives here will expose successes and flaws that will be used to strengthen the program. But I haven't seen you look so happy. I, oh my god, I mean this is something I never expected them to get in. Out up of the cage, the up in the tree, just like that. This incredible journey among the great apes in Sabah is sadly coming to an end. It's been amazing, inspiring. Moments I will never forget. When I see the volunteers, when I see the doctors, when I see the rangers, I don't think this is just a career for them. I think this is a passion, a dedication. You can see in their eyes when they look at these animals, um, it's like looking at their children. I think what they're doing here is necessary because if we don't continue work like this here, then our orangutans are going to be extinct. I would like to see more of us locals being here and appreciating the wonders that we have. When you see the orangutans, when you see the different expressions on their faces, that's when you know what is important.